Hey everybody, it is Noah from Hacking Hollywood. Today we are going to be adjusting the 12 inch teleprompter from Prompter People. I've been using this prompter for a little bit already. Uh, you can see that in my wide shot here. Um, I do have it set up on my desk. I do have some hardware there to make that work and to support this. Um, and obviously it might shake a little bit when I am on the desk itself. But in, in, over the last few days, I've been using this prompter to do some reviews and do some different things. I'm actually gonna take this down, take this apart, do a little time lapse and uh, keep this rolling on the side here while I try to fix this prompter. I, I say fix, really it's just tightening bolts and tightening nuts and that kind of stuff. So we're gonna kind of take this apart and look at it a little bit closer. That way you can kind of get an idea of what that repair process looks like. So we're gonna be kind of off on the behind the scenes look here on the side for a little bit as I do that. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Prompter People has been really good to me so far. Uh, they actually sent this complimentary to me for doing some of the other reviews. And so far I've been really, really impressed and happy with this prompter and the other prompters that I paid for. I actually bought two 24 inch prompters. Now there's been some delay because of COVID-19. I'm actually using the 24 inch prompter on a shoot tomorrow, which is great. And I do wish the second one was in, but it's not in quite yet. Yet, but hopefully they'll be able to catch up to the back order that they have on some of the prompters they have and some of the tripods they have. And you can see the gear review I did on the two tripods on the Corporate Streams branded channel. So let's get right to it. Let's go ahead and pull this camera down and look at it a little closer. So the next step is I'm going to try to get in deep in here and just see what's all a part of the system. I used a clothespin or C47 in industry terms to keep this up on my uh, lens. I do have a 19 millimeter lens, which is very shallow. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this camera off, this whole riser off, or at least slide it back. So typically you'd wanna do this on a tripod itself. Have it secured in place. Obviously I'm doing something a little different because I'm trying to make this 12 inch prompter into a desk top setup. You can kind of look at the different parts. I can see this plate mechanism could probably tighten, but for now that's fine. It's really not even about that. It's about the screen itself and getting a closer look. So I know I have some foam. I'm gonna pull off this fabric to try to see if there's any bolts or anything I need to look at. And I got to the bolts that I think I need to tighten, yep. So there is some Allens right back here. So I want to grab my Allen tool. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift and tighten. Ah, so it's actually not those screws. It's going to be the screws underneath this Velcro. And that's kind of disappointing because that's going to be a little bit harder to get to. So I'm just going to double check that these are tight. And I see where the play is happening. It's happening right there. Yep, the same on both sides. There's just a little bit of play right here at the corner brace. So this is not one solid piece, this is two smaller pieces. And so that little bit of movement is the only thing that's throwing me off here. So I'm gonna try to see, I bet you anything there's a screw right here in this corner. And we're gonna carefully set this on the side here and pull back this Velcro. So there are two Allens right here. And so instead of just loosening it and trying to tighten it back down and make it snug, I'm gonna run out to the garage, I'm gonna grab some Loctite, and I'm gonna see if I can get this whole section to stay tighter, which is the whole goal in the first place. So, one more tool, BRB. So I honestly don't know if this is gonna make a huge difference because it is a lot of force on this little corner. Um, I wonder why this system couldn't be on this side, if maybe there, it's the same thing where it's connected these two here. <sighs> to be honest with you, that's probably not the best design. You're putting a lot of weight pulling down on this corner. Carefully, add some Loctite here, just to drop. Sometimes when you're working with tiny tools, you gotta be very delicate. I'm not always the most delicate person, as my wife will probably tell you. She often makes fun of me for slamming drawers and slamming lids and slamming cabinets. So if you ever watch this, babe, sorry, I'll try to be better. Of course, we see that all the time. So maybe there's a difference, maybe there's not. And we're going to start that same peeling process. I went through the whole process of 
recording four different unboxings at the end of it I realized somebody forgot to turn on the microphone well it was on it just wasn't on the ATEM mini there's a two-step thing that needed to happen so ultimately it's my fault because I forgot a detail and that's what happens sometimes with tech stuff is there's so many steps and so many things that you have to do you might forget something so yeah this can go a little tighter same thing as before so I'm gonna loosen it all the way off at least enough for me to get my hands in there. So I got the threads mostly off. And I'm doing the rest by hand because this tool is a little heavier and harder to wield. You know, because it's such a delicate process here. So pull this back once more. Now I'm going to try to keep this upright so that the Loctite goes where it's supposed to go. All right, we're back. And I think this part might be a little challenging. Well, I guess I should do the uh, cleaning before I do the challenging part. But basically, I, I think getting the fabric back on the frame is going to take a little bit of finessing because um, they did a really good job at the uh, manufacturer. Oh, oh, that's way better. I can already tell you that. Another thing is I wanted to see if I could tilt the screen back more, get it more there. We'll see. Let me see if I can get this pulled. And the whole hope is to elevate the screen because right now it's tilting down a little bit too much. You can't really see the top of the screen. Um, and even when I slid the screen all the way forward, it's still not quite enough. So hopefully that makes the difference there. And now we're going to be trying to add back the camera. And then this fabric, I used a C37, okay, clothespin. Just to clip it on here. So what I'll do is I'll put this in place. So that should do. You can see. Oh yeah, beautiful. Um, I guess the last step would be to scrunch this fabric down on the lens. So the way the prompter is working is it's basically blocking all the light on this piece of glass. And so when there isn't any light, it's kind of like putting your face up to the window. There's no reflections. So this blackout is kind of blocking that. So you're going to be able to see through that. But because of this specialty glass, the person or really anybody looking this way, it's actually kind of hard to see the camera. It's all blacked out. There's no light there. So there's nothing being illuminated on this side of the glass where the camera is. And that's what allows reflections. So you have the screen that's going to be set up underneath. It gets set into the reflections, and that's what you will see as the talent when you're looking into a teleprompter. You see the screen that's placed just below the reflector. That's how that works. Let's go ahead and try to get the monitor here. So now comes the fun part. I'm going to jimmy this back into place, which is on my little mini tripod head there, and hopefully everything goes well. Let's find out. Oh my goodness, I fixed it. <laughs> That's exciting. So um, yeah, we got the uh, teleprompter back in place here. We've gotten the mirror to be better secured. But yeah, so that's what that looks like. Let's go ahead and get the, the camera back on and make sure that's dialed in well. Uh, so simple fix, 30 minutes or so. You can do that yourself. The thread locker is cheap. It is like five bucks, if that, at uh, Home Depot or another home store. It worked very, very well. So let's go ahead and go back to one. It is way better than it was. So I maybe lose just a fraction of an inch. And I guess that would depend on the lens you're using. So if I had a tighter lens, then I could tilt up a little bit more. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with this fix. Four Allen screws. The smaller one, I believe, was two millimeters. So that's something that you can use. This is something you can pick up at Home Depot as well for like 15 bucks. So instead of shipping it back to prompter people, that's a quick and easy fix. Get some Loctite, spend a little bit of time, make sure you wipe down your screen when you're done and you're good as new. All right, thanks for watching Hacking Hollywood. If you wanna know more about live streaming, you can check out corporatestreams.com. So if you have any live streaming questions uh, or questions about filmmaking as a whole, you can always leave a comment down below. I'll try my best to get back to you. And thanks for being a part of the Hacking Hollywood community. See y'all later.